brightest uh, stars at the moment in cycling. So Lara won a silver medal at the European Youth Olympics um, back in July. And God, this has been a long summer, hasn't it? So won, won a silver medal. And this was actually a groundbreaking moment because we've never won a medal. We actually have never even been in the top 10 at the European Olympics. So to have somebody come home with a medal and, and also with two top, top 10s with uh, um, uh, with Maeve and uh, Shay Donnelly as well was fantastic. I don't know if Maeve is here today. This week? No. no. We'll give her a round of applause in her absence. But so I just want to have, and then Lydia, of course, Lydia is off to the World Championships next week. Lydia is uh, probably one of our most successful um, professional cyclists that's uh, come out of the country because she won a stage of the um, Tour of Valencia uh, earlier this year and uh, has been really successful on the track and on the road. So I'm going to just uh, kick off with a couple of uh, questions. First of all, I'm going to ask Lydia. Lydia, how did you get into the sport? Um, oh, my line is always that my car broke down, which is actually true. <laughs> um, <laughs> but no, I kind of I kind of fell into the sport um, quite randomly. Like my car did break down, so I needed a way to get around and to get to UCD actually for volleyball training. Yeah. Randomly. Um, <laughs> so, so that's yeah, all behind that, you. I, uh, it's like crazy story but I was redundant at the time and I thought I was unemployed and I was floating around and I figured if I was going to buy a bike I'd buy a race bike and then yeah. I kind of fell into it, fell into Orwell Wheelers and Aideen, probably a lot of credit to Aideen for getting me into it. And it's taking a lot of credit anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And I don't know, Brian Hammond tries, um, even though he made me crash in my first race. Um, I still blame him for that. Um, yeah, no, I kind of just fell into it, like I, I always kind of make, you know, the usual question I get asked yeah. is like, why did I stick at it? Because at first I was terrible. And I, am, I still like always maintain that. Like I wasn't yeah. someone who was natural to the sport. I came from sailing, so I didn't come from an endurance background. You know, I was starting at ground zero yeah. uh, from endurance sort of stuff. But I just really enjoyed it. Like I started on the track then when I moved to London and that seemed to suit my lack of endurance. So I, I had yeah. a decent sprint at the, um, like kind of naturally. and. Yeah, just really enjoy track racing. So that was my yeah. first kind of passion in cycling. And then kind of over the years, built up the endurance and yeah, yeah. kind of enjoying the road side of things as well. Yeah, and of course, like I, I mean, I asked uh, Lydia earlier when her downside of the season is and uh, your answer was four years ago. <laughs> so, so you kind of move uh, seamlessly from kind of track to, to the road. How do you do that so well? Uh, yeah, with a lot of help from my coach. I probably like say that James kind of organizes all that pretty well. Yeah. I, yeah. I kind of try to have my cake and eat it, which sometimes yeah. means I end up in a hole. But uh, yeah, just kind of really strategically planning my season. Like I was saying to you, I've actually had all the way until next year planned from last year. So yeah, it's really important for me to plan in my breaks yeah. and my training and um, yeah, just work around stuff like that. Yeah. And kind of, yeah, I think when you do a sport full time, you really get to understand your body and I'm quite in tune and I know when to stop and when not like when to push on and yeah, yeah I, I, I talk a lot almost daily with my coach maybe, maybe he actually doesn't like that so much I don't know but yeah. anyway like, <laughs> I've got really good communication with my coach so yeah we chat a lot and kind of talk it through and we both yeah. kind of know when I need um, a couple of days off to like recoup yeah. and, or, or, and as I said and that's taken a few through. years to kind of understand that as yeah, well yeah I it? think yeah I think one of the I definitely um, yeah I've been working quite a few years with the same coach um, yeah. which I think is definitely very beneficial for me anyway so yeah, yeah he, he knows me inside and out so he like you know he sees all my training yeah. so I think we're quite in tune and it seems Brilliant. to be working well anyway so oh. road, long way at last. road race at the world championships now next week yeah, I'm really excited. It's like, um, yeah, kind of from the beginning of the year, it was definitely a big aim to kind of um, get selected and go. So, yeah, I've been really kind of honing my training towards it. And, yeah, no, fingers Great. crossed, um, yeah. it'll be good next Saturday. Super. Okay. Well, we might come back to you in a minute, but I'm going to just go to Lara next. Lara, you're relatively new to cycling, but it's been like a baptism of fire and super success out of it. Will you tell everybody a little bit about how you actually got into cycling? Um, yeah, I started like mountain biking when I was like eight with the maze, Kriva. Um and then I was just doing other sports like running and hockey and football and stuff. And then I really liked mountain biking, so I said I'd join a club, and Oral Wheelers like sounded really good, so I joined that, and I realized it was more road. But um, I started my first kind of road thing was um, the girls' camp 
that which Orla organized um, in Blessington, I think, and that like started my yeah. working for road cycling. And I tried um, track cycling that day, like the day after as well. So that was yeah. like really where it started. And one thing we always hear about the from from the youth girls who are racing that one of the things that really keeps them in the sport that you really like is the camaraderie because there's like especially from the camps that Orla runs there's a really nice community yeah. of you and you know what's what's it's that like like the group of girls from the girls camp have like become a really good close um, friend group and like when there's new people we like everyone yeah. gets to know everyone and. Yeah, it's a really good, like everyone just goes to a race to see their friends and it's then they compete as well. So. Yeah, and yeah, so it's friends Friends once you cross the line. Yeah, it? yeah. It's really <laughs> <so>. yeah. <laughs> Enemies on the road, isn't it? Well, <laughs> sometimes. And, and what do you, like, what do you love most about, about cycling or about cycle racing? Um, I think it's the friends, like seeing everyone, because yeah. we only get to see each other um, a few times a year, so then we yeah. all come together, but then, I don't know, I just like, pushing myself hard sometimes, yeah. so I like the racing as well. And the adrenaline you get yeah. from it. Yeah. All right. And and have you noticed since um, your kind of your rise to stardom, getting your silver medal at the European Olympics, have you noticed any change in how your friends in school talk to you or how they, do they know what, um, are you, actually I suppose if it's July you were probably finished school, do people talk to you differently, like, do they talk about the sport differently? Um, yeah, they definitely, they kind of researched it more, they know a bit more about cycling, but a lot of my friends are like very high up in other sports like um, hockey and running, so yeah. they kind of know friends that went to the European Youth Olympics for their sports and stuff. Yeah. So they'd understand that it was like... So they get the yeah. commitment and they... So they, they, they understand, but they wouldn't like be interested in cycling sometimes. They, they don't really yeah. get the whole aspect. The commitment. Okay, great. Well, I think that uh, leads next into, I think with Lydia, what a lot of people might be interested in knowing is how did, how did Lydia go from um, aiding taking you out and, and cycling groups to getting to um, the level where you're racing in WNT um, pro cycling on a pro cycling team, and what were the steps there? Like, if you, you know, for the likes of Lara or Quiva or people who were in the in the audience here, like, what what would you say to somebody as to how to get to um, the top level? I think, um, well, it's a, like it's a really interesting question actually, because I think mm -hmm. what kind of gets women into the sport and into the competitive sport is actually. I, like a difficult question and he, he, like, I had a quick look at the survey results earlier and like a lot of them are quite surprising and I think I'm probably unique in that I was just I've just always been super competitive like I've always been quite sporty I've always just wanted to race so I knew yeah. as soon as I was on a bike I wanted to race the bike like I'm not really one for just riding around like even I, I, like, I enjoy training but I train because I race yeah. like if I didn't have a race coming up I'd be I'll be sat on the sofa not doing very much. So it's the like the the competitive edge of sport is what drives me and but I think not a lot of women have that. Yeah. And or not a lot of women maybe realise that they have that because like from the survey results you see a lot of people just saying oh, they're, too, they're too scared or they feel like you know that they're not good enough and I think it's it's that sort of issues that need to be addressed more and, and getting more women into the competitive side of the sport because it, it, they just kind of need to overcome that fear and like you can even like from Laura as well saying like the, it's it, the it's the kind of camar like camaraderie side of like cycling yeah. that I think um, women enjoy more like they go to races because they're meeting their friends yeah. there and I think yeah maybe over time they realize they want to win that race and they start training to get better and, and yeah but that's not what gets women to the start line yeah. And I said, like, for me, I was very different. I knew I wanted to race, like, no matter how rubbish I was. I was like, I want to be on that start line. And for me, seeing the kind of progression from, like, getting dropped to then, like, maybe attacking and then getting dropped and then maybe attacking and yeah. then staying away, you know, I was always quite, um, like, driven by my own progress in the sport. Um, and I was quite lucky that I started cycling in London, that there was lots yeah. of races that I could do. Like, I, you know, there's, like, three, four yeah. races every week. So it, I you know there was a lot that I could turn up to and um but yeah I think it's just kind of yeah understanding kind of what is stopping yeah. women from getting to the start line I think and just on on that like you touched on it about in London like do, do you find that now when you're at that pro level when you're going around and you are entering a race and there's going to be 100 women on the start line and it's it's a women's a women's race do you find 
a slightly different kind of um, environment to what you find if you're kind of going to a, you know, in maybe back in Ireland where there's a mixed group or a smaller group turning up. Do you think that that, that helps? Or? Yeah, I mean, yeah, definitely. I mean, when you turn up to a pro race, everyone, that's everyone's full-time jobs. You know, they, they're turning up and they've got a job to do for their team. And yeah. it's, yeah, it's a professional environment. So it's, you know, everyone's there with the same, like, frame of mind. But when you kind of drop that down then to grassroots level, not yeah. everyone's there for the same reasons. Yeah. Um, not everyone is there to win the race, and not everyone is driven by winning the race. So yeah. It, um, yeah, it's like it, it's massively different, and yeah, yeah I mean, I st like even I've noticed the difference in you know saying like doing national series races. Yeah. Um, the field is kind of split, but still split like between those people who are kind of turning up because it's just a sport they love to enjoy versus someone who's trained specifically for that race and wants to win. So it's like, it's a really interesting mix yeah. of people um, that we need to cater for. And yeah. yeah, it's quite in interesting, really. Yeah, well, that kind of feeds nicely back to, to Lara. Like you mentioned already, you were saying like you, you did a little bit of a few other sports, but I mean, you were kind of top of your field in running and football and that. Like, do you find that like when you, when you train, do you train because you want to be the best you can be, yeah. or yeah? Uh, like from a very young age, I was really competitive, and like I always wanted to beat the boys and running, and like I always wanted to score all the goals. Yeah. So um, yeah, and winning like Irish dancing competitions, I was always really focused on that. Yeah, and when when you're saying that um, a lot of your friends are at the top of the sport, do you find that? that kind of um, environment kind of you feed off each other with it yeah it's good it's like some people can be kind of like private about it but others it's really good to like talk about yeah. it and learn what their kind of trainings are and what they're eating and everything yeah brilliant might open it up and see if anybody has any questions for either for lara or lydia Hi. don't be shy about it anybody want to ask anything Orly, I knew you were probably a burning question here. <laughs> Don't be shy. You, you, did, you, you asked the question I did want to ask, but how, how did you get from being a beginner cyclist as such to, yeah. to being deciding that, you know, this is what I want to do full time. I mean, you have, you have an engineering degree, you know, it's a, it's, a, it's a big commitment, you know, it's a big change of lifestyle to go from potentially earning quite a substantial amount of money to, <laughs> I, to earning not so much money. <laughs> you know, it's, it's actually like, it's, a, it's an interesting side of the sport. I mean, when you, when you, like, you start talking about professional women's uh, cycling, and yeah, I definitely don't do it for the money. I've never done it for the money, and that's why, it, like, the prize money, like, kind of discussion I always find quite interesting, but it's because I've come to the sport from a much different side, and um, I, I just I just do it from the love of sport and the love of progression in the sport and kind of yeah and like if you ask any of my friends they always say I'm kind of an all or nothing kind of person so when I started cycling and I started winning races in London I was kind of like okay how far can I how far can I push this and then I had um, Commonwealth Games coming up and I knew I would hit the criteria for that so I was like okay right if I'm gonna you know I have that kind of cherry of Commonwealth Games and I was kind of at work, like I was sat in the office and all I was thinking about was my training that evening and kind of realizing I was letting my work slip quite a bit. So yeah, um, took the leap and decided to quit work before I got fired probably. But, um, <laughs> yeah, like it's... Um, I yeah, suppose I, the whole peloton must be like that though as well to the, all, all the women who ride, rates, you know, professional have, yeah. have given up. Or you find you that know, a lot uh, of like, um, definitely a lot of the women's peloton what kind of maybe study whilst racing or, or like things like that like they're um still quite like push the education side of things or kind of knowing that they're not really going to make a living from the sport um mm. uh so you know they know that once they finish like they're going to have to like go back to something else but uh yeah so is that so a key it's, thing it's, for you like is that are you kind of looking that you had done your career before you started cycling so you always have it to fall back on yeah I think, well like i think for me like that's um there's no stress to my racing in that sense. Like I know when people come into the sport younger and they just go straight into a professional career, you know, that's that's their career. I still I still struggle to think of cycling as my career. Um, it's something I love to do and I'm quite lucky that I, I do make a living from it now. But I say make a living, I'm not gonna like but you know, I, I, I can I'm able to do it full yeah, time. Yeah. Um, 
but yeah for me it's still as I said I do it from the love of the sport not not for the paycheck at the end of the month so yeah it's a much different kind of feeling like or reason why I go out and train every day so would you recommend to, to the youth like you know to guess you know it's important to you know like what I suppose I'm getting at like I think it's important for the kids to learn skills of, of cycling and everything it's good coming in at a young age but equally their schooling is very important as well too, yeah for sure too. like I mean I think you just need to I think with any professional sport I mean because it's I mean ultimately it's like your body has to do it and like anything can happen in your body at any time like if you crash and you're injured or mm. you know like it's it, anything can happen so I think you need to like definitely keep a view on the bigger picture um yeah and just I, I don't know keep a bit grounded like um yeah professional sports is a very stressful career to mm. take up so it's um yeah just to kind of keep a bigger picture on it and always have a plan for what to do outside of the sport yeah, yeah. any more questions does, uh, does wearing the national jersey put more pressure on you or do you enjoy racing in it even more only when i race here <laughs> uh, yeah, the, I, it's it's an interesting one actually. Like it, yeah, I'm incredibly proud to wear it every race, and incredibly proud to wear it at, at the UCI races because, yeah, I definitely like, um, I'm definitely noticed in the UCI peloton, which is quite nice. And um, people definitely like. I think it's it has brought like Irish cycling onto the scene, seeing that jersey in professional races. Um, so I'm quite proud of that. I'm quite proud of that, and I'm proud that WNT have given me the opportunity to be able to do that. Um, so yeah, no, it's great, but um, yeah, I only find it as, it's only a burden really when I'm racing here and I kind of know that everyone's watching me or, yeah, or no, or like I take massive pride in, in being national champion, so every year defending that title is stressful, <laughs> <laughs> but um, enjoyable, but yeah, I've been to have on it. Well, we might, we might move on to the rest of it, but you're sticking around after, at the end, yeah. so if you've any more <laughs> questions, we can... Uh, you can talk to Lydia and Lara as well. Um, but what we might do is just give them a round of applause and just move on. To <laughs>